mean, what did you like about that one, especially the third quarter? Yeah, like eight points against. That's that's great. Um, but yeah, I thought it was you know it was it was our whole group in that third quarter. You know, starting group come in, they forced a, a timeout pretty quickly, um, and then you know I thought the bench group came in and probably didn't quite reward themselves with the offense at the end of that quarter. But come off eight stops in a row. Um, got scored on, they got another three stops in a row or something like that. So, um, yeah, the way we locked down defensively, little adjustments from half time where we could just crowd the area a little bit more. And, you know, I thought Isaac got some cheap ones and some little receiver spot plays. And, you know, Sunday made some shots in the first half. And But the focus was on, you know, Davis and DJ all night. And we did a solid job. This was a, a high powered offensive team coming into this shooting the ball really, really well. What was the key, especially at halftime, where it looked like they were about to put up another big number? What was the key at halftime that, that let you guys like switch that and make the most, exploit their spacing, their lack of spacing, things like that? Yeah, I thought the biggest one was just, you know, just moving Whitey just a little bit more to a help position. And, um, you know, Montrez just, you know, really wasn't looking for his primary shot today. And so if we could have that extra help, um, connection physicality to the basketball, you know, driving, um, you know, Davis into crowded areas and making, you know, make it really hard for DJ to get a catch. You know, and then I th- we're pretty consistent with that the whole game. And then that resulted in the crowd of just not letting other people get easy ones, which I thought they did in the first half. What did you make of the performance from your two bigs, especially against two quality bigs that they had? Yeah, we you know we, we really felt Robbie this week. Obviously, he hasn't made shots you know this year, and just had you know we celebrated a couple of big threes in practice that he made, and just felt like he was going to come in and um, you know make a couple of shots today. Um, but yeah, the second half with the efficiency of you know when your point guards are having seven and eight assists each, um, you know a lot of those were to you know to Marcus and Rob very close to the rim on. on on simple plays, so um, yeah, I thought both of them were outstanding. Ian, is it particularly rewarding getting this sort of win because you guys lent it to your defensive identity? Yeah. Uh, definitely, you know, that's, this, that's what we hang our hat on is the defensive end, and I think uh, you know all week in practice is kind of what we've been we've been talking about and, and, and trying to execute, making get back to who we who we are, um, you know, connection, physicality, and making sure that uh, guys aren't getting easy looks and making teams and. Uh, Tough offensive guys, you know, take the shots that we want to take. I think we did that tonight. Did we have an update on Chris? What happened to him and how he is? Yeah, no, he just jammed up his ankle a little bit, but so he's, he's he'll be fine. Yep. He was, yeah, he's like, if you need me, I'll come back in. So, yeah, he was at that point. It was a bit of a scary moment, like. No, oh, you never want to see one of your players go down. And, um, yeah, but we got to, you know, celebrate his 450th in a, in a special way. And, um, you know, he's, he's turning into a, just a, you know, really great leader of this club. And, um, you know, for him to get to cheer some of the young guys, he enjoys that experience just as much as he does making threes right now. So, um, yeah, good rewards for the whole group. He moved into the uh, top 25 uh, point scorers list in the NBL, I believe. Uh today, so, and he uh, did it with the trademark three after missing his first one. Right. Um, yeah, you know, he's going to, when his career is done, he's going to be one of the most elite shooters and big moment players that to ever play in this league, and, um, you know, we talked today about it and to say the future, you know, we want him to be recognised as one of the, the great leaders and the great winners as well, with Damian Martin and Mika and some of the, you know, those kind of guys as well, so yeah, if we, we can get both those parts done, um, you know, at, at the end of his career, because um, all he wants to do right now is win. That's his total focus about, you know, this, this club and trying to win games. Dean, Max Becker here, can you talk us through the culture that CG43 creates around the club on a day-to-day basis? Yeah, high standards, work ethic, um, sees everything, uses information well that he sees, whether that's talk to me about it, whether that's talk to a, a player, go directly to people, done a really good job of that. And, you know, he's one of the most elite shooters because he does the work. And, you know, all the young guys see that every day, how much work he puts in and the standard that he sets um, himself. 
you know, not many people can get there. I see he's one of them that <laughs> they can they can shoot with him and, and stuff, but um, there's not many people that can. 38 points off the bench, there's been a consistent theme, I guess, the bench production across the last two years. Can you talk us through a little bit of Dally um, coming off the bench with that bench unit, I guess, fitting in there? Yeah, you know, there's different guys on different nights. He's, he's not going to, he's not going to be there for the whole year. Um, and so it's, it's going to be match up dependent. When we've got everybody healthy, obviously he missed a period of time with with baby and stuff like that. And you know, CG missed some time with illness early in the year. And so you know, it's just work your way back into a starting role. And um, you know, I'll have some great decisions at the end of the year about you know who starts and who comes off the bench in the matchups that we have. But everyone. You know, gets a couple of opportunities to come off the bench and is, and is familiar with that role as, as well as starting. Uh, we'll be in a really good position. Did, uh, did Ian set the tone with that last year? Because he did come off the bench a lot last year. You know, as a six man. Um, you know, if someone like him can do it, anyone can do it. Yeah, I think so. You know, we, when you win six man of the year, t- to me, um, to get a bit more out of him, just go ask him and do the same role. It's like he would have accepted it, but I like I want a little bit more from you. I want I want you to, um, you know, come into that starting group in different moments and um, and really ignite us. And you know the two two big wins that we've had, Perth and Adelaide. You know he's been exceptional in both those games. Well, you've gone to Shilly neutralising people before. Um, had Shilly on DJ, Delhi went on DJ, Ian went on DJ. What went into the decision to sort of pick DJ as that guy that you were going to basically just take out of their offense? Yeah, I thought he was, you know, after watching the first half against the Kings the other night, I thought DJ was the one that really, you know, led the scoring, was creating the energy for the group in the, in the way that he was moving around. So, um, yeah, we thought he would be the focus. Not that we didn't have a focus on Davis, but I um, you know, thought we might be able to do a little bit more with crowds. And we just felt Shea to start the game is the best one to just stop DJ from catching the basketball. And so we went that way, you know, trying to make his first couple of shots as tough as possible and, um, you know, a pretty good result in the end. Your next game is against... Phoenix is just by the head coach. Teams are notoriously energized when a new coach comes in and they play a game. How do you guys approach that sort of matchup? Um, I think, you know, for me, I think we just worry about our group. Um, you know, we got another week to prepare for those guys. Uh, played them once already this year. Um, and, you know, what they have going on is it's kind of their business. You know what I mean? And um, I think we, you know, we want to build off, off this week, the great week of practice we had, great win tonight, today. Um, and try to carry that over to next week. I said, what are the keys to, I guess, beating or guarding the best scorers in the league? Um, just being attentive to them. And like, like Coach said, not, not making their first few catches easy, first touches easy, first shots easy. Um, you know, as a, as a scorer myself sometimes, you know, when you get that first one or two, then the, the tough ones you start to make seem easier for them. And so guys like DJ, um, guys like Sobe, guys that we're going to face, you know, coming up, uh, Derek Walden, we got to make sure that we do the same thing uh, from the start of the game. A couple of grades coming through. How do you rate yourself going, <laughs> going, going up against going up against, someone like, <laughs> going up against someone like Chris Golding in training? How do you rate um, yourself shooting against him? Man, he's he's probably, and I, I play with a lot of guys, but he's probably the top two or three best shooters I've, I've ever been around. Um, and it doesn't come by accident, though. Like Coach said, seeing him, seeing him every day, the work that he puts in, um, and you know how, how hard he is on himself because he, he expects more from himself. Um, this is so contagious. And you know, out of the young guys, including myself, when I first got here last year, uh, being able to set the standard and the only one that makes you get better as well individually. So he does a great job of it. Cheers.